Joining us now in studio, not over Zoom, is David Nixon. I would just like to point out that you must carry some prestige and clout to be one of the few people they get to come back in studio first. I called a few people, you know, talked to the higher ups. So Dave, I, actually, I did. I, I did. <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, it's just timing. Timing works. Listen, I'm in this building every Tuesday now for after the review. Yeah. We're spending a lot of time together, so you know we might as well make it in person. You're a Bob, like we've talked, a yeah, band of brother. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, we can call that with BYU TV. <laughs> Here we are in the midst of NFL preseason, and Jeremy and I discussed at length yesterday just. What an overwhelmingly awesome first preseason week it was for several BYU guys. What are the emotions for those guys after a good game in the preseason? Because you have experienced that. 100%. Especially for guys like in my spot, Isaiah Kafusi's spot. We saw his big tackle for loss on that fourth down. Uh, it's, it's very relieving because those first couple weeks, it's a huge buildup to your first preseason game. Uh, and, and you're excited. You're focused in getting ready prep for the game. And to go out there and perform and get some good film out there. I mean, the, the thing you have to remember about these guys is that maybe they don't make the cut for whatever team they're playing for currently, but you're trying to put out film for the other 31 teams. Uh, because the other 31 teams, are they're scouting, getting ready for their regular season games, and they're noticing you on film, you're popping off on film. And that's what happened my second year with the Raiders. Uh, we played the Cowboys in a preseason game. And sure enough, the Texans were scouting the Cowboys, getting ready for their first game. And so whenever I got released by the Raiders, this Texans picked me up because they noticed me playing against the Cowboys in our preseason game. This is what they told me. And uh, they brought me in to, to, to provide some depth there. So uh, you never know what team's looking at you, and you never know what opportunity is going to come of it. And so that's why when you have these preseason games, you're not only playing for your current team, but you're playing for those 31 other teams. Mm -hmm. And you've got to go out there and you've got to ball out. And you've got to find ways to make an impact and, and, and be, sh be shown uh, and be known by, by some of these other teams. It's really interesting because there's 28 dudes right now. Matt Bushman makes it through the initial cut with the Raiders, which is great. Which, by the way, let's talk about that in a second. Going back to Raiders Raider. Stadium now in, in, uh, uh, with Allegiant with Arizona a couple weeks. But um, a lot of these guys are going to make themes. Some won't. But what's the process like as a player trying to make it through, trying to make a roster, whether it be the 53-man or the practice squad, just to hang on? I mean, it's hard to explain. I tell people... In the NFL, it's, it's physically demanding. You're facing the best guys in the world. Uh, it's, it's mentally draining because you're trying to swallow up this big playbook. And, and, and the playbooks in the NFL are much more expansive than in college and more difficult to comprehend. Uh, but emotionally, it's draining because every day you can lose your job. You can get cut. And, and I, I remember talking to people saying the crazy thing about the NFL, even if you made the squad, come during the season, I remember we'd be walking to team meetings and, you know, you think everything's great, life's great, you're getting ready for your game that week. You look outside and they're working out three or four other linebackers. And nobody's hurt, but they're just working them out just in case when you do get hurt or just in case you didn't perform well that week, they've got a guy that they scouted that they're ready to bring in and take your spot. So you had all those together physically, mentally, uh, you know, emotionally, all that makes it so difficult to get through camp. And that's why camp's so draining for a lot of these guys. But at the same time, it's so rewarding because if you do show up on that 53-man roster when it's all said and done, uh, you know that you've, I mean, you battled for that spot and it's extremely rewarding. So these guys are all out there and the great thing, they've expanded the practice roster, the practice team since, uh, since I played. And so uh, a lot of these guys will have opportunities to go on the practice, te practice uh, team and then, you know, hopefully make their way back up onto the 53 sometime during the season. So it's, you still find your way up there. Tell us the story, and you've told us, but I think it's fun for the audience, of, like, sometimes you got to call mid-season or whatever, and then you jump on a team, and then you play. You actually got the game ball for the Rams <laughs> one game, just yeah. jumping in, right? Yeah, my, uh, let's see, my third year. I was actually doing uh, the, the pre- and post-game show uh, with you guys, and all of a sudden I get a call from my agent saying, uh, on like a Monday, saying, hey, you're flying out tomorrow. The Rams want to come work you out. <laughs> and the, the crazy thing is I'd already, this was halfway through the season, this was week eight, so I'd already started to kind of taper down my workouts. And I probably wasn't in the best shape, but, uh, <laughs> but then I flew out there, I went to the workout, and uh, it, was, it was nuts. I was just, you know, I was sucking wind. And uh, fortunately, I, they, after it was all said and done, they, they signed me to their 53. And, I walk into meetings the next day, and my name's up there starting on all the special teams. Because that's what you do. If you're, if you're a second-team linebacker, you're starting all the special teams. That's why you're bringing them in, right? I mean, you only have 53 guys in our roster, so everyone has to contribute somewhere. And so um, I started that game, and I was against the Cleveland Browns. We're on the road. 
late in the fourth quarter. We punt the ball to him. We're down. We punt the ball. Josh Cribbs gets it. And I come down and I strip him. Ooh. Cause a fumble. We recover it. We kick a field goal. We win the game like 12 to 10. It was a terrible game. <laughs> that was a year where the Rams, we weren't so, so hot. But uh, anyways, it was a pretty wild experience to come off the couch. And then you're right. At the, when, at the end of the game, uh, Steve Spagnuolo, head coach, presenting with the game ball. And I'm just like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Do you even know my name? <laughs> <laughs> the, last, yeah. the last Saturday, I was sitting here on the countdown to kickoff, and the next week, I'm winning the game ball. So that's, that's hilarious. That's how crazy life can change it. And that goes back to my initial point where, listen, when, you, when you're given those opportunities, you have to make, take the, you know, make the most of it. And that's what we're seeing from these guys. Like I said, from Isaiah Confusi uh, and a lot of these other kind of cool, these guys are getting reps in there. And you've got to make the most of it. You've got to make, uh, you got to make a name for yourself. There are a bunch of different BYU guys on roster. I think 27 players in some fashion or another are currently under contract. You survived the gauntlet. You mentioned Isaiah Kafusi. You mentioned Kai Nakua. Uh, there are others that had notable games as free agents. Zane Anderson had a good game with the Chiefs, multiple tackles. Which of these free agents do you feel like did themselves the biggest favor in the first preseason game? I'll be kidding. I didn't get to watch all of the preseason games. I watched the Saints one, obviously, uh, pretty closely. But from the highlights I saw, listen, the, the, that fourth down stop by, by Isaiah Kafusi come out the edge. I mean, it's a perfect tactical technique, and it's just a big moment of the game. And we saw Jim Mercer, the owner, say, wow, that's a great play. I mean, the NFL tweets out the clip. Yeah, I that's mean, awesome. yeah, that, that's the type of publicity and the coverage you need. And that's what I'm saying. When, when your number's called, you've got to make big plays. And that's what the NFL is all about. Can, can you make the big ones? Um, because the, the, the mundane, you know, play in and play out, everyone can make those plays. Uh, but can you rise to the occasion? So I, I love what Isaiah did. I didn't get a chance to watch Bushman. Uh, I don't know how much, how much action he got. one catch for five yards, had a block on a touchdown run. So I'll say this about the NFL as well. Now it's changed a little bit because now they're going to three, three preseason games versus the four. Uh, so the format changes a little bit. But the first one, usually the stars play a little bit more, and then they tend to taper off. The second, third, they play a little bit more as well. But the, the third and fourth, as it used to be, almost non-existent because they're getting ready for the season. So you'll see Bushman and a lot of these other guys start to get more reps as this preseason goes on. But those first couple of games, you're trying to shake the rust off for the starters, um, which we saw in kind of week one with Taysom playing quite a bit and, and Jameis and some of these other, these other guys. So we'll see that kind of the, the, the backups get more playing time as the preseason goes on. So these next few weeks will be big uh, for, for the guys trying to make these squads. It's gnarly because last year's team didn't play a single Power 5 team, yet you could argue it was the greatest uh, guys in the NFL year in BYU history, maybe. Like in the 80s, you know, yet probably more meaningful guys in singular drafts. Zach Wilson highlights this, and then some seventh-round guys, Brady Christensen, of course. But, like, the volume of guys is gnarly. And then, like, Kyrus Tonga is listed as a starter for the Bears. I wonder if he's going to be a better pro than college player. Because I almost feel like he underwhelmed a little bit. Like, he was good, but he wasn't, like, what we were talking about when he first showed up. And now with the Bears, he could start. Like, let's go. I, I think for Kyrus in particular, two things he'll benefit from. One, being in the NFL, you're getting proper amount of rest. You're getting the right training, and you're also getting the right diets. You don't have to do homework. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to worry about all that life. But you have, you have pros. You have dietitians that are putting you on strict diets. And you've got now the resources to spend money on healthy food versus in college. You've only got money to go spend at, uh, well, at Beto's. Well, now they and, got uh, uh, Bill Bar, a thousand bucks, you know? Yeah, you got some good stuff. But I, I think uh, Kyrus as well. Kyrus got double teamed. You go back and watch the film. He got double, triple teamed every play when he was there, here at BYU. Now you're at the NFL, and now he's going to be the one getting single block because his big buddies that are getting paid the big money are getting double and triple teamed. And so I think that's why he'll excel probably at the next level, and that's why he's doing well so far in the preseason. Uh, but he's a, he's a guy that, I, same way, we all knew he had the potential, but now you add in the fact that he has time to really dedicate time to his body and get in good shape and get stronger. Um, and I think that's why you'll see him take that next step. We're going to finish with some quarterback talk. Uh, we first, should ask about Taysom Hill. That's what we're doing. Yeah, totally. Some quarterback talk. We buried the lead. Taysom Hill is competing with Jameis Winston for that starting spot in New Orleans. It's well documented. He's your brother-in-law. You talk to him about all of this what? stuff. Okay? So I, I know that a lot of this information is close to the vest, but in your opinion, in your as much as you can be unbiased, is Taysom Hill going to start in week one for the New Orleans Saints? I haven't, he hasn't confirmed. Uh, none of my family has confirmed anything. Frankly, I don't think he quite even knows. I don't think they, Sean Payton's the type of guy who likes to keep stuff cl close to his best, um, as we've seen throughout the season last he year. He loves Taysom, though. He doesn't keep that close. He, he loves Taysom. <laughs> that's, that's well documented as well. Yeah. 
Um, but I think, listen, everything trending. Once again, when Drew Brees went down last year, Taysom was a starter, not Jameis. Um, so far, Taysom took the first reps in his first preseason game. That might change in, in game two. We'll see. Um, but I think everything's trending in the right direction. I mean, Taysom's been there for four years. He knows the system. Yep. Uh, and, and I think Sean Payton's comfortable with him. So, yeah, I mean, to, to think, I've seen tweets, to think that Taysom and Zach Wilson would be starting. I, somebody posed a question. When is the last time you had two starting quarterbacks in the NFL? Is probably that, Steve Young and Ty Detmer, I'm guessing, in the early 90s. Like, probably so. That, yeah. That's probably it. Almost Jim years McMahon ago? didn't start. He was a backup in the latter part of his career. Right. It would have, yeah. Yeah. Probably 30 Steve years ago. And Ty, yeah. Long time ago. Long right? time ago. I mean, 30. How, Holy how, how cool is that for BYU, right? And so. We'll see. We'll see how everything shakes out uh, out of these few, few uh, first few preseason games. But I think that's where it's training for Taysom. Hopefully, I mean, how many before. schools can say that they are starting multiple quarterbacks in the NFL? Like maybe Ohio State, Clemson, Alabama, and BYU. That's some elite company. Yeah, yeah. And Deshaun Watson's situation is interesting. So I don't know that they will even have two, right? So it's yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Okay. Wait, way to way to keep that on like l- like low and like you know I don't know we'll see. Take your brother in law's gonna start for the Saints. This is gonna be awesome. Right? Uh, it's, it is exciting. I will say, having been around, I, we watched the game with with his wife, my sister Emily, and uh, she's on pins and needles the whole time. You sure. Know? Yep. And and we're as a family, we're excited as well. So. Uh, he's listen. He's in a great situation. Regardless of what happens, yes, totally. well, he'll he'll be on the field some way or, or some form or fashion, right? He'll be on the field. So whether it's a quarterback or, or playing his utility play, we'll see. Okay, let's ask you our question of the day, which centers on the BYU quarterbacks. If you had to pick one guy to start today, on August seventeenth for the Arizona game, who's your guy? Okay, first let me preface it with this: I, I've been to practice, I've watched these guys throw. BYU fans. Any quarterback at this point is fantastic. I'm telling you, these guys, the, the balls they're throwing, the, the, the places they're putting the ball in, the, the way they're stretching the defense, it's impressive. And, and I, so to answer your question, I think Jaron Hall, I, I think he's going to get the nod. But if you had to resort to, you know, uh, Conover or Romney, BYU's in great hands. And, and you've got three very capable guys that are very confident. And I think that's the one thing I noticed from watching them. They're all extremely confident out there, you know, running this offense, and they know the offense. I, and, and what it looks like from Roderick is he trusts them as well. I mean, there's, 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 a great, there's great chemistry right there right now with, with those guys. And then you throw the weapons around them. I mean, when you got Tyler Algier in the backfield and you got Lapini Katoa, I mean, you, you can hand them the ball, and that's going to open up the pass game big time. And so I, I'm, I'm excited for this team. I, I think Jaron's probably the starter. But if they decide to go with Romney or Conover, I, I'm all on board. I, I, th- I, I think you can't really go wrong in the situation right now. Awesome. And I can't wait for BYU to ba- debut the three-quarterback system. What, everybody gets a series. Every series, yeah. They just rotate the whole game. It usually works really very well. Very innovative. Yeah, it works really well. Usually. Every time. <laughs> great to have you back in studio, brother. Hey, we got to keep doing this. This feels good. I feel at home yes. here. That's further review tonight, baby. 7 Eastern. Let's go. David Nixon with us on BYU Sports Nation. Okay, coming